All right, and we're back. So another we feel like we just watched these guys play a couple weeks ago. Um, and I don't know how to say this any other way. We need to assume they're not watching, but we are in store for another 10 hour long shops mirror. They played that before, right? Yes. Although neither of them are playing okay. Ravager. They are actually both playing Smokestack, Karn Silver Golem. They both are playing two Karn Silver Golems. Their deck lists are like five cards different. Like it's including sideboard. Like they're playing seventy of the same seventy five. It's ridiculous. So I'm super sorry, man. I don't know. I'm super I don't know if they're I don't know if they're working to together for this playoff. <laughs> they're to play each other or something? I don't know. I don't know why they would do that. But. I don't I don't know. But I'm sorry, Matt. You just picked Storm into three shops decks. <laughs> and we get to play lots of shops mirrors. And get in to play... the seven the seven seven match. And the... seven match up to seven matches in Five of the seven could be Shops of Mirrors. And the other two would be Storm versus Shops. <laughs> Which is probably just as abysmal to watch. <laughs> before, and before anyone else is like, Shops is dead, nobody said Shops was dead. Zero people said Shops was dead. What we said was we feel that decision making is possibly influenced in the wrong way where everyone should get stuff restricted not just one deck because enough people complained about it i think it's that's where it's mob mentality mob is mentality. Ha what happens to shops what is uh it's like, it's, it's like showing the actual worst reason for mob <laughs> you know like the reason why people talk about democracies being bad is exactly what happened to shops <laughs> Except that in this case, it was more of an oligarchy than a democracy. There wasn't actually overwhelming support for this decision. I yeah, it's just pretty the, much. It was just the it was just the pros complaining. So, we get so I mean, they don't know what he, each other are on. Yet maybe. somehow he plays. Okay, maybe he knows what he's on because he played Crucible instead of Sphere. Maybe. They, were they working together? <laughs> I, I, serious, don't, I don't this know. This is a serious question. Like, he he led with Crucible instead of leading with Sphere. Like, why would you ever do that unless you know it's a mirror? Or you have, like, a high reasoning to think that it's a mirror. Or Waste, because it's Wasteland. All right, let's see his but reaction like, to the Workshop. Dueling Workshop. You just, you just go Ancient Tome Sphere. Like, that's, like, the correct play against anything other than the Shop Mirror. The correct play is Ancient Tome Sphere. Oh, wow. Frexian Metamorph copies Crucible of Worlds. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go take a nap and go ahead and call me when it's done. <laughs> no, so now now neither player both players also have wastelands in their hand. So now e neither player will ever have they will always have the even number of lands in play, basically. Um and JP can actually lock him out of the game. Because he has... Um, or, at least, or at least the short term. Because he has the Sphere and the Revoker. So he can actually get a clock down and Sphere him. What do you so name this might not take that long. Uh, you just name a Mana Source that's not your Mox Emerald. So I would name Mox Jet? Or Soul Ring. Soul Ring actually would be a pretty good name. Yeah, that's probably the, the best card. He gets a good draw. And, and there's a chance that he just didn't play the Soul Ring if he has a Soul Ring in hand. Um, well, no, he would have played it. He would have played it. Your opponent went workshop crucible. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It. They would have, they would have just gone workshop. Yeah, so ran. Um, he needs black lotus. It's fine. Doesn't really matter. Yeah. Just, just name a mana source, I think. Any, just crap shoot a <laughs> mana source. I mean, there's some merit to like naming like hanger back walker or something. So. Or, or I don't think naming ravager would be correct. So Keith's ahead by one mana. No, no, he's not ahead. No, no, he can be... He, JP's would be ahead for one. So, Waste, Waste versus J, both. JP's always going to... JP's going to be ahead of one mana because yeah. he has the mods. Which basically, like, the sphere he gets to ignore. They're just going to be... Yeah, <laughs> like, you can never get ahead on land. So, now they're on both at zero lands. So, 
I mean, like, that's really... He draws the Lotus after naming it himself. He's probably, yeah. what the hell? <laughs> but uh, JP also has a, a Talarian, so JP has massive mana advantage right now. Because he has the Talarian, and he has an uh, Emerald. I mean, he has a useless Lotus, so I'm not going to count that. But... <laughs> No, it's and Mox. he's also he's he's also he's also the first one that gets to play a land. So it's Mox Sapphire technically because he has so Talarian J- Academy. JP JP is the only one that ever has the option of getting two lands in play if he chooses to make it that way. Yes. Well, yeah. Does Keith want to play a land or does he want to waste? He wants to um, waste. He ha- he can't play anything relevant. That's why he's not. He can't playing really. his workshop. He needs to draw he, Mox. He needs to draw Mox. He, 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 can, he can only he can only play Sphere and Thorn, and he doesn't want to play either of them. I mean, maybe Thorn just to get a permanent in play, and it doesn't lock you out of anything that you care about. And you care about getting a creature in play at this point. Um, it doesn't lock you. Playing a Thorn doesn't lock you out of a Mox, which is one of the few things that you want to play right now. Yeah, Mox Soul Ring would be castable. He wants, yeah, he wants to draw. He wants to yeah, he wants to draw any artifact mana. I don't really understand the ancient tome. You have a what is going on? You have a workshop in your graveyard. He played in and said go. It doesn't matter. Maybe he's trying to see. <laughs> maybe he's trying to see how if he would be like, no, you can have an ancient tomb. I don't care. <laughs> I don't no, know. That one's okay. <laughs> yeah. All I know is if he gets this Karn online, it's going to be good times. It's going to eat so much stuff on JP's never, side. Never, never, never going to happen. I, I just don't want to see it happening. He has to get so many top decks. Oh, Ratchet point. Bomb. Ratchet Bomb is also the same thing. He can go workshop Ratchet Bomb oh, and clear oh, out a bunch right. of mana. I forgot, I forgot about Ratchet Bomb. Okay. All right, Ratchet Bomb. The, here's his way out of this. He can Ratchet this up to two and take out the Sphere and the um, Revoker. So it takes out uh, Keith's clock, and it also takes out the sphere, which sets him up with hopefully a, a card. At by, uh, by that point, he draws something. He can draw like a Mox or a Soul Ring or something in the meantime while this is ticking up. I think that the Karn would be really, right. really so, solid. Yeah. So, so playing playing the Thorn was definitely not. I forgot he had um, that in his deck list. Playing the Thorn was definitely not playing the Thorn was definitely correct. Tangle? I don't know about Tangle. Tangle doesn't do much. <laughs> yeah, so Keith, Keith's playing two Ratchet Bombs and JP's playing three. Is that what it is? I think but so. De- seriously, their decks are so close. I can't even... It doesn't even make sense if they weren't working. Really... If they weren't working together, it's there like had... strangely, strangely suspicious how close their decks are. There had to have been a deck posted or something somewhere. Like, that's what this looks like. The fact that they both have two Karns, they that's both what have... makes... Two Karn. Yeah. Both have two Karn. I haven't seen a Karn in five freaking years. And there are five Karns in this top four playoff. Like, <laughs> I just, I don't even know. I don't even know anymore. But it's like this, it's like identical numbers for almost everything. Or like almost identical numbers for everything. There's like one or two cards. Well, uh, J- JP's playing Frickson Hel- 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 yeah. Hel- 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 versus Wormcoil. Yeah. But like come on, like they're both just That's that almost seems like preference. Yeah. Alright, so waste to waste. Alright. It, it is preference. Six stocks yeah. and shops are always or just preference. Unless it's Triskelion and the you know, the Triskelion combo thing. <laughs> uh oh he he can actually he can play this Hellkite. Academy yeah. boom. Okay. That's that's probably game. Most likely. Because um he, I think he can just fire breathe him next turn. Um. Yes. So five. So you need ten mana. We, oh, he's gonna see he can see. He can ratchet at two. It would have been. Um. He would. Have, he would have made four with the Talarian Lotus seven. The one two mux was it two muxes nine mana and then he, had, he can play a land ten mana. Yeah, he, he he was dead. He's gonna get fire breathed, and if he didn't ratchet bomb. And it doesn't turn the Lotus back on for that three mana, which is two more damage for fire breathing, but it also doesn't kill the Revoker. I mean, he's so also either, just, n- no matter what, he was taking 10. He's just dead in two turns anyway, because he cannot yeah, deal with yeah. the Hellkite. 
and he doesn't have any permanents. But he didn't draw any moxes that game. That was pretty unfortunate. He didn't draw any moxes. Yeah, I mean that's what happens when two crucibles hit the table. Is whoever draws, I guess, more moxes is is going to be in a much better situation in terms of mana. So when it happens that early, especially. Yeah. Um. And both players have wastelands. So I, I, I think I think I think the big the big thing that um, Keith could have done differently, if we want to uh, nitpick a little bit, was not wasteland on turn one or turn two. Was it turn turn two? He wastelanded, and I think that kind of sealed the game against him. Okay, so uh, let me change the score. I see a lot of smokestacks and a lotus, but like lotus powered starts aren't even that big a deal in this matchup. Well, not when you have repeatable lotus. Um, I, kind of repeatable Lotus. I mean, it's repeatable Lotus in a workshop deck. <laughs> it's repeatable can put more permanence into play. Some of them don't even do anything; they just sit there and are annoying. <laughs> um, I hate TP's hand. Um, I don't think Smokestack is good in this matchup. And then he has Lotus, which is like card disadvantage, and he has yeah, they both mulliganed. Both Mulligan and JP Mulligan is the first turn Hellcat. I mean, Keith Sam was okay his first one, and I think the second hand's actually worse. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't want to keep unless he wants to dedicate I this mean, game to Mickey. I don't think he wants to keep Triple Ancient Tomb. <laughs> well, he has a Ghost Quarter, um, so he has a Factory. So he has some other mana sources. He's Ratchet Bomb. Ratchet Bomb's a pretty universal answer in this matchup. You're gonna have time to kill anything, almost, almost everything. What about Hellkite? What about Hellkite? 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 That's coming first down. First turn, <laughs> first turn, Hellkite. Is, yeah, is gonna absolutely brutalize him. I mean, Keith already said he's, he kept right. So yeah, they both kept. Keith needs a miraculous top deck to beat this Hellkite. Basically, clone is the only thing that can do it. Yeah, Metamorph. Metamorph would be huge. Yeah, uh, actually, he's still thinking think he, on this hand. He keeps. He it. doesn't. He doesn't have any answer. Other answers in his deck, does he? Does Keith have anything else to answer a Hellkite? Hellkite's just really good in this matchup, apparently. Um, Let's see here. I mean, Hellkite used to be a standard in, in shops for a while. Uh, Keith's especially as a singleton and Forge Master, but even prior to that, it was like a almost a four of automatic four of. Yeah. Um, Keith is playing Dismembers. Okay. He has oh. three Dismembers, and he's playing. He's playing three metamorphs. So he's six six out in his deck. Yeah. So he obviously wants to draw them fast because the Hellkite deals five every turn and it also blows <laughs> up whatever Keith's playing up until that point. First turn Hellkite. What are we what is the plan against that? Yeah, it, it's Yeah, it's no, metamorph, you just gotta yeah. draw one of the you gotta draw one of those six cards. You gotta draw, you know, one of the three dismembers or one of the three metamorphs. That's the only way you get out of this. Is he not? Is he still thinking on? I think he wants especially, to pull up the. the especially with JP having three mana that can yeah. just you know three three non workshop mana, he can blow up a lot of things. So he can actually put him to zero permanence past the Hellkite. He can ghost quarter the shop and blow the Ratchet Bomb, and not get fire breathed on, which I think is probably his best bet right now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean he's just gonna he's just gonna blow up your ratchet bomb anyway, so yeah. might as well use it. And the ghost quarter is locking him off of stuff to do. It other than the hellkite, just to set up your out. You know, when now when you draw your dismember or your metamorph, or hopefully when you draw them, um, you are in a, a very very good position. Yeah, either one of those you, cards needs right back in this game. Yeah, yeah, you turn like an automatic loss into a like almost immediate win. By just drawing one of those six, six cards, yeah, and he has three three more draw faces. Or so here's draw phase number one. Crucible. Again, not what we want to see. Just let's play use... the factory. Let's play the factory and pass. Yeah, I don't want to use that ancient tomb. Um. Definitely do not want to play the mana crypt. No. That just gets eaten, and I don't want to play the crucible because it's still vulnerable. If he if he draw if he draws a top deck ancient tome, 
he can blow up your crucible, and you don't really just want to hand that to him. But um, Keith disagrees. Maybe he's playing for the future. He just knows that that metamorph is there, ready for him. He, by taking two from the ancient tome, also there's a, there's a chance you just gave yourself um, JP just drawing a land. Yeah. Uh, gives him the kill next turn. So you might have also taken away a turn to top deck or something. So we'll see if JP uh, draws them. JP just needs to draw a mana source to kill him. No, actually, he's dead anyway because he can't pay two life or four life anymore. Oh, right. Yeah, because yeah. both those yeah. removal spells take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That ancient tome was. That, that, that playing the crucible was definitely wrong by them. Yeah, because he has to pay life for all his removal. So Hellkite beats uh beats Wormwell. Well, that's, that's for sure. <laughs> they didn't both have a turn one. That doesn't count. If they both. I have mean, a worm turn quail, a, a worm quail would have been fine. Would have been much worse there, though. I think. If they both had Hellkite, there would have been a parody right there because you could have played the other Hellkite even with the tomb. But didn't have enough mana. You would have gone. Yeah, he would have gone crypt tomb, taken a bunch more damage, and then try to see how he can not die to. His own mana crypt. Right, right, yeah. They would have dueling worm coils there. Yeah, and, and the Ratchet Bomb could have swept, swept away the clo the, the the Ratchet Bomb wouldn't have have to have been used. He probably still would have used it, but he would have the option of not using it there, and then he would have had it to kill tokens. I guess there would have been parity though. If it was worm coil versus worm coil. That was a lot faster than I expected it to be. That's all I care about. <laughs> yeah. Turn 1 Hellkite does that. Turn 1 Hellkite does do that. And that wasn't even a Lotus. That was Crypt Mox Workshop. That's not always just Lotus Powered Start. So, we'll be right back. We're going to do the Losers Bracket first. So, it's going to be Matt versus Keith to see who's just out. Um... Bad matchup on Matt's part. You'll need to really pull something together, but I've seen it done. It's not like it's an, a 5%, 95% matchup, yeah, but yeah, still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Matt having to win two of three matches against Jobs to stay in this playoff is... I mean, that's very slim. But he's, nope. he's lost. And, and now he has to win two straight. Right. And then, is, he, and then the rest of his almost, matchups are Shops. He needs yeah, to somehow yeah. beat a bunch of shop stacks, which he's, I don't know, it's possible. He has to win two straight matches against shops. I think his chances of staying in this playoff are as low as you can possibly be. We will see. We will be right back. We'll get the next game set up. We're going to share deck lists with the players and give us a couple minutes, and we'll be right back. 